There's no logical way to hate rock and roll music. So he's like, I know you're upset about the time signature. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then he lands on like the message is God only cares about the effort, the faithful effort yes. of the music. Yeah. And that's so perfect because Christian music is the effort grade of the art form of music. <laughs> sure, sure <laughs> Isn't is. It though? The participation trophy of the arts, if ever there yeah. was one. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if you hear it often enough, you do go fuck yourself eventually. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Live from New York, it's Saturday White! Yes, let's do this. <laughs> Christian SNL. Very excited. Yes, yes, sir. And of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. And by the way, if David Letterman ever invites us on the show, we're going. Oh, Just yeah, throwing yeah, that no. out. Mm -hmm. If this podcast is ever invited on David Letterman, what, you want us to turn it down? We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna. I'm saying that right now. That, that'll make sense eventually, listeners. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Fire by Night, Episode 7, The Truth About Rock. Like rock and roll music. And yeah, it's Christian Saturday Night Live. If God is real and Eli goes to hell, He's in the cast of this show forever. <laughs> Eli's <laughs> goddamn nightmare for one straight hour. Oh, it really is. And every time he comes up with a good joke, they shoot it down because it's too risque. And then yep. everybody laughs at really bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this week. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Eli, stop interrupting Blaine. He's doing another pun. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Somebody's giving you a note on Facebook about your comedy because they know how that works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Eli, how bad was this episode? Well, if you love Christianity's list of invisible enemies, but it hasn't yet extended to reverb and electric guitars, yeah. you <laughs> will <laughs> love <laughs> this episode. <laughs> it's been too long since we heard a good screed against the dangers of rock and roll music, right? This was nice. This was tame. Yeah, well, a lot of times we do like, you know, the homophobia and, and the, the misogyny and all of that stuff that we have to deal with on the show. It's, it's nice to like just watch them freak out about distorted guitar solos for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Ex it's exactly. It's like when you find out that the villain of of a scary movie is deathly afraid of mice or something. Yeah, like, right. oh, <laughs> ain't so tough. Or very cute rabbits. Yeah, right. right exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst YouTube algorithm that worked on my screen anyway. The next up list, it was a bunch of Mylon Lefevre music. He's the guy, sure he's was. the musical guest, the Christian mm -hmm. rock guy. A bunch of his music videos and one other in my next up list. It was, you must stand up against woke ideologies by Jordan Peterson. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, my, my YouTube algorithms are also fucked. <laughs> really shortcutted that uh, rabbit hole for you down okay. to white supremacy. I feel like, I mean, the algorithm's working in this case. I'm the anomaly, but like, yeah, right. I see what they're yeah. doing. No, right. The playlist is just fire by night, Jordan Peterson, a Nazi flag you can have in the background <laughs> of your computer. Yeah, right. All right, so I'm going to go with best worst temper tantrum. Yes. It's so fun. We'll get there. I just, I, there was one of those moments where I was just like, mm, I almost wish I still smoked so I could take a break and just live in that <laughs> moment for another four or five minutes. <laughs> and I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst unhinged rant in defense of your barely palatable Christianity. So as he hinted, Myron, Mylon, sorry, not Myron. That's a, no, Myron's name. a name. Yeah, yep. no, that's a name. Mylon. Mylan is Amabelle. the main interview. Yeah, exactly. Mylan is the main interview. I have so many notes on his physical appearance. It may be the rest of the episode, but he's a Christian rocker and he does, I'm going to say 90% of the interview, okay? But there is a beautiful 10% where he's yelling <laughs> at the email he got from Pat Robertson or something. Yes. I couldn't get enough of it. 
Oh, it was a it was a ton of fun. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Bad comedy is always the hardest thing to make fun of, unless it's this bad. There's a level of bad where it becomes easy again. So we're only going to need a minute to arm up, but when we return, we'll dive into all the unrealized sketch concepts that are Fire by Night, Episode 7. Just do it. Hold still. Well, then do it faster. I'm doing hey, it. Guys, guys, what are you doing? Uh, Heath's putting his caulk in my ears. Ah, uh, so we're not going to get paid for this ad then, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Caulk. C-A-U-L-K. Oh, okay, can I ask why? My headphones keep falling out. It's so annoying. Okay, okay but Eli, if you want a pair of earbuds that stay in your ears, why don't you just switch to Raycon? What's Raycon? Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can listen to what you want when you want without breaking the bank. And they stay in your ears? They sure do. Thanks to their custom gel tips, you'll get the perfect, most comfortable in-ear fit. But that's not all. They're also water and sweat resistant and come with eight hours of playtime. And all that for less than I'd pay for a big-name tech brand? A lot less. Raycon sent us a pair to try when they became a sponsor, and they were so good that Eli and I's wife stole them. Isn't that right, Eli? Did he tell us what Raycon is yet? The stuff is hardening. It's, you it's know what? Never mind. Never mind. Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam. All right. Well, looks like we need to uncock Eli somehow. It's going to be weird. I mean, I get the impulse, but we've talked about this, man. No, no, no. I mean, caulk. C-A-U-L-K. Oh, Again. Right, well, right. But I, I, I feel like we could do both. Do both. No. Okay. Yeah. You guys talking about how cool I am? Yeah, buddy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Welcome to the writer's room meeting for Fire by Night, Episode 7, The Truth About Rock. Finally. Oh, it's about time we covered this. Oh, you guys are excited for this one? Totally. At last, a show like ours can dispel the puritanical and closed-minded notion that just because music is one genre or another, it's inherently Christian or anti-Christian. Exactly. Music is music. Indeed. Exactly. Well, no, uh, um, well, no. Sorry, no? What? No. No, no. We are going to want to make it clear that some music genres are um, satanic. But we're having a, a Christian rock band on the show as the musical guest. Well, you're right. No, yeah, I know we, we're gonna. But I was thinking that like we could spend most of the time just like apologizing, you know, for him being a rock band. Okay, well, if we're just gonna apologize for his music, then what's the point of having a Christian rock band, like, at all? I'm actually glad you asked. So we're going to explain to our audience that even though being a rock band is inherently satanic and evil, if you're Christian enough, you can use rock music to trick non-Christian children into being Christians without their parents noticing. And we're going to say that? Almost word for word. Yeah. Huh. Um, guys? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, what's up? Do you ever worry that if all we do is imitate secular culture to trick people into our worldview that it might not be true. Dave, you got that? Dave, that is a dollar in the realizing it's all bullshit jar, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's on me, dollar in the realizing it's all bullshit jar. Should be $2 for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off being reminded that this ain't live, this ain't New York, and this ain't Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> we're watching like the city that never sleeps, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, <laughs> that, not what, well, not the city like out in the a little bit outside of it. The suburbs a, of an unpaved road to nice. an evangelical mm -hmm. priest's little Pretty. studio basement. Live, I had it down as a white evangelical from Willa Coochie trying to buy cocaine for the first time. Photo montage, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The photo <laughs> montage is very clearly supposed to be that sort of grungy eighties nineties aesthetic that mm -hmm. SNL had, except. It's very clearly just different angles on their church building with him being like, this gentleman has a mustache. Perhaps he is in a gang. <laughs> <laughs> it comes up, it says, with special guest Mylon Lafavre, but it's written in that, it, like the font, it looks like um one of those things where it's supposed to say something when you turn it upside down, but it actually yes. doesn't kind of say anything in any orientation. It, yeah. 
Yeah, and it says that both times they say his name, which makes me think that he had like something in his rider that was like, look, if I'm going to have a name as silly as Mylan Lefavre, I'm going to make everybody write it in that symbol that everybody drew on their notebooks in middle school. So that's my <laughs> green right, M&Ms yeah. right like there. The Save by the Bell S thing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we get the opening, then Hell Universe Dana Carvey comes out. This is Blaine Bartel. <laughs> Fana Carvey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and can I just say, having watched now seven of these episodes, or I don't know how many we've watched. But oh, right. it's, it's more. It's too many. Yeah. Having watched a number of these episodes, Blaine Bartel really uh, mailing it in this week. Not yes. uh, not his best performance. OK, uh, just a quick reminder about Blaine Bartel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His wife divorced him and he became convinced it was his debilitating porn addiction, yep. not his lack of talent and lack of value as a human being that was the reason for the divorce. So he started a support group for men recovering from porn addiction. It is called... What is it called? Chopping Wood <laughs> Ministries. <laughs> it's a real thing. That will never not be funny. They have a convention <laughs> recently. They, they take it very seriously. Yes, they do. Yeah, no, so, and, but now he's given us this opening monologue. It's really kind of like, like Eli said, mailing it in. He's going way fast. It's like, it's like the downside of the cocaine high, you know? Yeah, it's, it's maintenance cocaine. Right. right. It's, yes. I, I don't want to feel how I feel after having done cocaine amounts of cocaine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what we're getting. So, and then we get this fake cut, and we honestly expect it to be like, you know, just the producer going like, what the fuck cocaine did you take before this or whatever? <laughs> but no, it's fake. That's le it's leading us into this gag ad for Elvis songs. OK, I feel like it was the director being like, dude, you, I cut because you got to just talk normal. <laughs> you got, we ran we ran the Elvis commercial fake thing right now. That's what's happening. You got to slow it back down, dude. Yeah, they they cut the part where he was like, is that the performance you're going to give? Fuck? Yeah, it is. I'm addicted to porn. I'm an addict and I'm making my, I'm in withdrawal I from porn right now. It's called right. chopping wood. And he was like, okay, we're playing an Elvis thing. Did you know 73% of men in America struggle with porn monthly? That's oh. according to his website. I just went to blainebartel.com. Oh my God. It's ridiculous. I feel like that number's low. I feel, I feel yeah. like the real, no, anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't struggle yeah, I was going to say, so, if you're, you're not doing if it, if you're right. struggling, the thing around your neck is too tight. No, we've oh, talked okay, about all right, or, all right. or too loose and get in trouble. Auto erotic. No, nope, we're going to get in trouble again. So, yeah. But so now this fake ad that they're playing is Elvis sings secular songs that glorify God. But because secular songs don't glorify God, all the song titles are blank. Did Elvis only do Christian music in their head? What is the bit here is my question as well. Is it that Elvis's secular music was bad or are they taking Elvis down a notch? Yeah, no, I think that the, the bit simply is secular music doesn't glorify because because, of course, Elvis recorded a lot of religious music. He had gospel albums. Right, of shit. course, yeah. So I, I think basically what they're saying is like, is simply secular songs don't glorify God because they keep going like, and here's a picture of all the people brought to Jesus by secular music. And then there's just an empty chair, right? Oh. Yeah, they lean into that bit for a good minute and a half and it leaves us all scratching our heads going, is that really the whole bit? I feel like they're, I feel like, honestly, I feel like this was like this actor threatening to leave if they didn't figure out a way to let him do his Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I was going to say that was someone in the writer's room who was like, all right, guys, you know, now that we're talking about the problems of music, I think we can address the real problem, which is that there's way too many people listening to the devil's part of Elvis's catalog. And they're like, the dead guy? And he's like, hear me out. Hear me out. I know you don't want to do a whole episode on it, but let's just do the opening sketch to Salty echoey silence and they were like okay yeah, that's fine <laughs> we do need to fill time here on fire by night yeah yeah so but and that was it we don't go back to the uh, monologue from there we're done with that shit and instead we move on to their hospital sketch right St. Corneas right because it's corny Eli's nightmare oh, the sketch it's literally my hell it's literally <laughs> my hell so the guy is doing is, is he's going for Groucho Marx, right? He's Groucho Mark 1124 or whatever. 
and basically they've gone to the gas station and got like you know Dave's big book of jokes, and they're le- yeah. they're using that to <laughs> fill in the blanks around their stupid ass hospital sketch. But they're not, they're not even doing that horrible thing correctly. No. Like they do that, but wrong. It's like, no, you know, the doctor's like, oh, it's a mental case. And then the nurse is like, a mental case? What is it? And he's like, it's a box. It's, I'm surely, you're, what, don't, <laughs> fuck. So, well, so give me, give me an idea. So here's the dad joke. Well, my skincare routine re- requires me to bathe in milk. Really? Is it pasteurized? No, it's just up to my neck. Right. That's the joke. They fuck that up because he goes like, oh, I recommend that your son bathe in milk. And she goes pasteurized. But it's not your eyes anymore. You no, fucking it. It is. Do it right. You don't even nail the bad joke. Just read from the gas station book <laughs> verbatim, man. Just <laughs> honestly, if, if they were just handing a readers, an old cum covered readers digest around in a circle and laughing at their own jokes it would have been a more pleasant experience <laughs> just an eight year old walks in you're butchering it <laughs> let me do it also mascot costumes right in two of the scenes there are people in mascot costumes for no reason at any point they Except just that they had mascot yep. costumes they're like well I'll be damned as ha- to hell if we're gonna have access to this fucking wolf costume and not get some use out of it, damn it. Yeah, but the bit here is that mom has brought her son in because her son has a terrible case of metal head. We know because he's bopping to his tunes in the background. Okay, he's... <laughs> they show him dancing around. He's dancing to, like, very clearly, like, Walking on Sunshine, Katrina and right, the Waves. Yes. <laughs> you know, the famous <laughs> hardcore metal band, Katrina and the Waves. And they have no idea what's going on. But he's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be Metallica or whatever they think is evil. At one point, they try to list a group of heavy metal bands, but they're trying to work it into this bird joke. So they list the Partridge family in there and their list of heavy metal. Famous Satanist hardcore rockers. (laughs) The Partridge family. Also, they do this thing where it's like, oh, it's time to put them to sleep for the operation. And they, they got a breakaway bottle. And everyone stops to be like, we're going to do it. We're going to do the breakaway <laughs> bottle thing. And he yes. like, he does it way too light, but it breaks away because it's sugar glass. And then very clearly looks at the actor like, are you okay, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is okay. He's okay. <laughs> the best. He goes. And then, of course, once he's knocked out, he asks the, the nurse for a scalpel. And then a series of things that aren't used in surgery. Now, this is not an escalating list. It's just a list. Yep. And if you thought these writers didn't know about the rule of sixes, you would be mistaken. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's twice as good as the normal one. Yeah. <laughs> of rule, comedy All right. stuff. Now, guys, that sounds not funny, but are there any absolutely terrifying recommendations they end up making through puns? For instance, do they recommend brainwashing at the end of their sketch? Oh, my sketch? fucking God. They, I can't believe they did. They clearly didn't realize they were doing this, right? Because he pulls out his brain and he goes, this is dirty. We're going to have to wash it in the water of the word. Yeah. So, yes, brainwashing <laughs> is the thing that they <laughs> landed on. Mm-hmm. Brainwashing. This kid needs a good old fashioned brainwashing. <laughs> I like honest propaganda. Let's just right, let's say, have them be honest. I think that's better. Not the most honest they get in the episode, but close. I'd give it second yeah, place. Really? <laughs> so, yes, but he, he, we watch him like clean up this stage brain in a fucking mop bucket marked word of God. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we cut to post op. He's in the waiting room. And now the kid is all clean cut and doesn't look all heavy metal anymore. Clean cut, by the way, is wearing a teal blazer over a button down on like a, He's a in loud flock of seagulls now, you know, yeah, Christian. Yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. right. Christian man without the hair. And then, of course, the Groucho Mark 1124 character says, you know, there's nothing wrong with listening to music. You just got to listen to the right music. And I'm like, so then there's something wrong with with listening to music then. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it. For example, he says they go for more puns. I'm not sure about one of them. He's like, okay, you know, no more evil music, no more twisted, sinister, huh? or Billy idolatry, okay, or David brain rot. What? what? Yeah, okay. Was, <laughs> was that supposed to be David Lee Roth? 
I was thinking Ooh. David Bowie. I thought Bowie because of the B. Because of the B? Right, that's it. I was thinking Roth because of the R-O-T at the end of Rot was the closest oh. they could get. Look, if you are, if you have two and you need a list of three, you put the crappy one in the middle. That is the only way I get through the citation needed quiz bit most weeks, people. Come on. <laughs> Duh. Jesus. How I have a job. Right. <laughs> so. And they end the sketch with like the, the people leave and then an orderly comes up. They do some more great puns. Disorderly. Oh, they yeah. Right. Yeah. No. You lie disorderly. <laughs> and then, <laughs> wait, sorry. That was very funny. But we have to talk about that as the sketch ends, the guy in the dog costume in the waiting room realizes that they're never going to reference him. So he just stands up and starts dancing. And I assume screaming, I'm in a dog costume. Right. Very like, I'm not wearing this smelly thing for nothing, damn it, kind of a bit. And I also I want to point out that they end this sketch with the with the doctor saying to the orderly, ah, we should go take a break and then walking off stage. That's how good they are at, at, at putting the punchline down at the end of the bit. Not rising to the level of killing all the actors in the sketch. <laughs> no, not quite. Exactly. Do you think the dog costume was an homage to the dumb fucking we're dressed as bees thing in early Saturday Night Live? No. Where there's no reason for it? Definitely And they were not. just like, we're bees now. 100% now. Yeah, I think, no. Definitely not. <laughs> not as clever as that <laughs> horrible homage. It's not homage clever enough <laughs> to something for that. horrible. Okay. And then Blake interviews the man, the myth, the legend, M Mylon, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk ever so briefly about Mylan's physical appearance. Uh -huh. I have him as pre-foie gras Doug Henning a bunch of times in my notes. <laughs> okay. Like before he eats it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, to me, he, I first see the scene here and it looked like a Christopher Guest movie. Like somebody was doing a, like a sketch type of thing about a stupid interview and this ridiculous looking guy is being interviewed because he looks like, honestly, an executioner at a job interview. Yes, like a medieval absolutely. executioner <laughs> at a 1989 job interview. I right. have him, yeah. I, uh, Kenny G. Sharp Cheddar. Whoa, that's, yeah, you get there eventually. Che where's the, fat. how does the cheese, oh, got it. He's a okay, fat Because he's a large gentleman. person. Sharp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Blaine is like, so you started off in secular music and it was only once you failed there that you started doing uh, Christian stuff. Tell us about that. You know, so what a weird path to take. And, he, and, and then he starts talking. And I did not expect his country bumpkin accent. No. Right? You do not. It's thick. Right? It's real thick. Yeah. I seriously, I tried to listen to like, it's long. This is a long, just serious interview. Oh, so long. Just grinds the attempt at comedy to a halt. I guess it's good if you think about it. It stops that from happening. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's so long. I stopped hearing his words. It was just like trombone with a southern accent. Like that's <laughs> all I heard at a certain point. By the way, <laughs> the reason they skate over his illustrious music career is because he had to break all his record deals. And in order to do so, he and his lawyer sued his record company as his becoming born again was an act of God. And they won, but they didn't realize that meant by breaking his contract, he wouldn't be entitled to royalties anymore. So he ended up having to work as a janitor at the church where he was trying to oh, be a Christian wow. musician. Because of the act of God. So he was like, so yeah, you didn't sue to lose all your money. Um, now that you have some, how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> Mylon. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. No, all we get here is him going like, well, you know, in my youth, I'd accepted Christ as my savior, but not as my Lord. And I'm like, oh, that's one of those meaningless phrases Christians employ. So they get to become Christian despite already being Christian. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like water weight. It's, yeah. it's water weight for Christianity. <laughs> this is mostly water weight. Really? I had eight of the seven pieces of the wand to seven parts, but then you need nine, it turns out. Lord. Lord is nine. Yeah. That's a bad example. That, that actually it's, makes total sense. It's exactly the right number. <laughs> Heath, you should, use a, you should do a joke that uh, people will understand. That but then the so extra, sense. the Lord was broken in half. There's more. <laughs> yeah. the, the boy, the, he goes, what brought you to the Lord? And he goes, like, I was doing a lot of drugs. And I'm like, well, yeah, if anything is going to sharpen your thinking, it's going to be a, a lot of drugs. <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes, drug addiction, the foundation of so many great worldviews. Yeah. <laughs> 
He says, I started with just weed, but that made me snort coke and do heroin. And I'm like, man, I'm smoking the wrong weed, I guess. I need better. That's really? <laughs> not I weed is an underachiever. <laughs> I was getting good enough weed my whole life to just stick to weed. I guess. I guess so that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> He's also tries to do like, oh, my friends died from the dope, except we all know that the members of his former band are alive. So he's like, some of them aren't dead and they make music that people like, but their marriages are bad and their kids don't love them. <laughs> yeah. Right. How, how's your marriage and kids? I would, do you know what? We're talking about them right now. So <laughs> talking about them. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the same stupid, you know, yeah, sure. I was a drug addled millionaire, but was I happy? And I'm like, yeah, you probably were though. Happy. Probably. Yeah. When you were high Drugs. on speedballs, probably super happy, right? Yeah. Like, be honest. Oh yeah. And rich too. Yeah. He goes, you know, he's like, I was opening for the who in, in Montana, because we were literally the only other band in the entire state at that time. So, like, they kind of had to get us. And he's like, <laughs> but then I was watching, I was watching PTO on TV one morning. And I'm like, oh, like all drug addled rock star millionaires are want to do. <laughs> Obviously. So I, I ripped off a huge line and I flipped on Pat Robertson at 6 a.m. <laughs> like you do. Exactly. And I got reborn. <laughs> yes, he's he saw all the Christian people there being happy and he's like, well, I should be Christian. I guess they look happy. <laughs> I just have to point out that that sentence literally dribbles into high pitched bibbity bibbity at the end. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's like, and you know, I'm watching it and it tells me no bibbity bibbity bibbity. <laughs> like that, I, I watched it several times. I was like, oh, my bit has come to life. I'm hallucinating. <laughs> no, oh, okay. he, he runs out of words and goes, no, man, I was watching it. Must have been bibbity bibbity. Bibbity bibbity are the exact ending <laughs> words. I got a glissando. I got a glissando yes. there. So I guess it makes sense. <laughs> With also a day crescendo. Yeah. Yeah, but no, but he was re he was what did he what did he say baptized in the Holy Spirit? That sounds like a euphemism for like God giving you a golden shower or something like that. But he got baptized in the Holy Spirit and he can't imagine taking dope now. <laughs> oh yeah. Really? Really? You can't I've seen the way Noah eyes everyone when he walks past the smoker. I think you can imagine what <laughs> it's like to take dope now. And then he's he starts singing. They start this song. Now, this is only one of many times that they're going to pump fake a song at us. Yes. And this song has the fucking tune. You know, like you'll start like you're leaving your house and you want your fucking dog to be calm. So you start sing narrating your actions to them. That's the <laughs> tune of this song. Going out the door, getting the poop bags. Everything's fine. <laughs> relax. <laughs> Yelling a slur word, people walking down. <laughs> what are they doing in my town? So, yeah, but he sings the song about how he wants to be more like Jesus, or starts to, anyway. Yeah. But then luckily the show gets as bored with it as I do, and we cut back to the interview. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So we normally, you know, write these in scenes, and we were like, okay, music. Nope. Back to the interview. <laughs> Just have like another one starts for no reason. Yeah. And keep in mind that this is Fire by Night. We've watched a lot of these. They often include multiple full length songs in their episodes, and they could not find a single Mylon Lefebvre tune that they could let go all the way through without being like, God, sorry, we are so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so you have a racist music video. That's oh pretty cool, my right? God. So I had these in this series of woofs with increasingly more O's in my notes. He goes, so Blaine says, so you got this video with all these Indians in it. I'm like, woof. And then Mylon goes, no, those aren't real Indians. Those are just me and my band in red face. And I'm like, woof. Yikes. <laughs> and then he says, we did it because kids think Indians are funny and we wanted to give them a laugh. And I'm like, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and then he's like, speaking of Indians, Momar Gaddafi is not in charge of the universe. Fucking well, God is, man. What? By the way, wait, I'm not scared of Gaddafi. You're scared of Gaddafi. <laughs> I love when we get because clearly, like, there was an insane argument that we missed just out of frame, <laughs> where he was right. fighting with somebody about the extent to which Momar Gaddafi <laughs> is in control of things right now in 1989. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Such a weird, I mean, you could have given me, I'm going to say a thousand years worth of guesses about who he was going to name drop in that moment. And Muammar Gaddafi would have taken me a while. Never, never would have. <laughs> yeah. So, but then we get to see his racist video 
give you an idea how brilliant the lyrics here are. This is the opening lyrics to the song. Get up, try and find a way. We will find a way today. Jesus Christ. Sesame Street would be embarrassed by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the main refrain of the song is, look up, the train's up in the sky. And I'm like, no, it isn't. I don't. I don't know where it is, but this ain't Back to the Future 3, so it's not in the fucking sky. That that well, not come out yet. That's what's so awesome is they very clearly didn't have train in the sky money, so it just cuts between a train on the ground and, and shots of the sky as though to turn to us to say, you get it, train right, yeah, in is the that sky. In that, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, up. It's, <laughs> it's like that. You know, train. Can we just change the lyrics to train? Not in the sky. But, but, Lest we laugh at him too hard, this is when he absolutely blows our dicks off with a guitar solo. Oh my god! Every one of us has guitar solo in all caps in their notes. It's because it it starts from way way far away, and you're zooming slowly in on this guy under a bridge, and you're like, "That's a fucking guitar." Is that a fucking key track? Because the, the image of the quality of the video that we watched, it was terrible. So you could barely see it. You're like, my God, is that a key? Are we going to? And then he, we finally zoom in enough and you're like, it's a fucking guitar. Nobody <laughs> doesn't want a guitar solo ever, ever. <laughs> All like, the time. I'm gonna, All the time. I don't know how to play a guitar. I'm going to get one and just yes. walk right. Like, you could walk into a funeral of strangers and they'd be like, oh shit. Fuck nice. yeah, man. Keytar. That's a cool jacket with the sleeves rolled up. I bet awesome. I could. I bet I could rock a fucking guitar. Yeah. So uh, there's also this. There's also this great moment where they try to incorporate a train whistle into the music because of the because of the lyrics, but they're not talented enough as musicians. So there's just a train whistle blowing over their song. Right. Like like it was in the background and they didn't want to lose the tape. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Then we get some uh, close-up shots of each of the very important band members like Mm -hmm. doing their thing at the camera. Mm -hmm. And it really looked like one of those dating videos on VHS from the 80s where some shitty guy with like a sweatshirt with a dumb rip in the middle is like pointing it at you and pulling his peck out for a second, (laughs) smoking a cigarette. (laughs) Yeah. You remember when boy bands had like a, I'm the sporty one and I'm the nerd. This is like if the entire band were like, I'm the rapist. That's what this montage is. <laughs> we can't all be that. Or we look dumb. Also, oh, it's really hard to believe that this, the beach montage that, we're, that, that you guys are talking about, it's hard to believe that was made by people who were there in the 80s, right? Because this this feels like kids trying to make fun of the 80s now. Right. In a, in a sketch, <laughs> right? I'm going to do a barrel roll on my boogie bo- I hurt myself. Oh, <laughs> rock. I'm the rapist. Just keep rolling. <laughs> And then at the end of the video, we get this long pan of a musicianless stage. Okay. Question, gentlemen, experts of the field. Is that because they all just got raptured? I think it's because they all got on the train in the they got, sky. They got, like, yeah, they got on the train in the sky. For, for, a, for a second, I thought, oh, fuck, my mind powers have kicked in. But no, it wasn't that. They were going for raptured. <laughs> all right. Well, word of warning. There's a lot more Mylon to come, so I need drugs. But there's somehow <laughs> even less inspired comedy waiting for us on the other side of the break on Fire by Night, Episode 7. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Okay, so how much did the telemarketer want? 500 bucks. 500. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could swing that. Did you delete the phone? Yeah, iCloud too. Okay. Oh, nice. Hey, podcast lister. Didn't see you there. We were just working on a little ongoing project. Yeah, so as many of you may have noticed, there's never been a viral video of Noah yelling at a telemarketer. Or a stoplight. Or a statue of a frog. And that's because Heath and I prevent that with a near constant flow of bribes, hacking, and counterintelligence. That's right. But if the little things get you fired up more than they should, and you don't have a full-time team of social media scrubbers, you might want to consider BetterHelp Online Therapy. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Did you see how the mailman put the mail in the box today? I am going to kill that guy. Ah, that one's going to be expensive. 
Yeah, I think he's already on the riding mower. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Blaine Bartell. Welcome to Fire Bunny Nights tonight. We're gonna to be talking about music. What music's good, what music's bad, what makes it Christian. Just music cut, interesting. cut, cut. Uh t- sorry, Blaine. Uh hey Dave, what's up? Well, so first of all, I love the energy. Um coming in great. It it just seems like your opening monologue is a little bit uh a little bit rushed this week. Rushed? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, if you if you if you don't mind taking it again, but a little slower. Sure, sure, I can do that. Yeah. All right. And action. Hi, I'm Blaine Bartell. Perfect. Keep going. Blah, blah, blah. Let's start the show. Uh, still rolling. Blaine? Was that not slow enough? Did I go too fast? It felt fast. No, it was no, it was the right speed, but instead of saying your lines, you just said, blah, blah, blah. Let's start the show. I did? I did yeah. that? Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Still rolling. Okay. Huh. Oh, I, uh, oh. Uh, 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 Blaine? Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, you're doing your lines with a gun in your mouth. You dare me? No. We. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're gonna rejoin the action with their recurring bout of anti-Semitism, the Jerusalem News update. <sighs> I forgot about this. Every time we watch this sketch, I have to go back and check the other episode to make sure that the names aren't getting more anti-Semitic because they <laughs> feel more. I felt like a Harry Potter video game was going to come rolling through, right? Just shooting spells at each other. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. No, that this is the Jerusalem news up- update hosted by Ned Koppelstein. Steen. Mm. Like a Jew. Yeah. yeah. And it, oh, at first he's going, he eventually gives up on this accent. But at first, he's going for this just sort of generally foreign accent thing. <laughs> sure. Right. He's doing me when it's anyone Russia down to like Eastern Middle East. Right. Just like yeah. Russia, Georgia, Ukraine. Anything. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call that the not quite Borat. <laughs> OK. Uh, in terms of costuming, if you were setting mm-hmm, up mm-hmm. a news reporter from Israel, an Israelite news reporter, what would you have him look like? Just costume wise? Eli, what would you do? Mm, Irani chic. I would go for Irani chic. Okay. Sure. 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 They went with something very similar. They went with gay pirate. So gay pirate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. So and the bit here is like they're doing a news update as though a Bible story had had just happened. And we, as a joke in the past, we've seen this, have said, like, well, how many times can they do this before the story is a genocide? It's six. We found it, six everybody. Six is the number, because this one is a fucking genocide. They're like, in our lead story tonight, a genocide. But don't worry, it was a, like it was inspired by the correct God, this one was. It was a musical genocide, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. This show is walking a weird line here of, like, <laughs> Okay, we're Christian, but like oh, Judeo, I guess the Old Testament is the story we're doing right now. That we're gonna let that count, but like also we're gonna be anti-Semitic for sure. Yeah, because <laughs> gross, right? Right. Yeah, and so they're telling us the story of Jehoshaphat and the, the horn players and the, all the fucking guys killed the the guys on the other side of the army got into a fight with each other and killed each other before the Jewish army could arrive. That's the story, right? The idea for this sketch was like, what if Jericho was like, like an actual band, like a jazz <laughs> right. band? I'm done with my idea. Nobody said anything. I'm There's, a, yep, yep. a jazz band. <laughs> and, yeah. and no one else had an idea. So we're going with it. Racist accent. Oh, my oh, fucking my gosh. gosh. Okay. Let's, let's really take this, right? This sketch is kind of boring. My notes are kind of small. And then this guy is like, I'm here now with Jehovah. What, what's the guy's name? Jehoshaphat, right? Well, that's not who he's interviewing. But yeah, F- Philippi, I think is this. He, he's, yeah, interviewing, he's, like, he's interviewing the, the Israelite trumpet player in the yeah, jazz exactly, band. Yeah. yeah. Which means black scent. So, yep. I mean, <sighs> real black. Like, hey, cats and kittens, it's me, Uncle T, the king of jazz. And it gets more racist with each word somehow. If you had actually done the your impression as racistly as he did, we would have had to cut it. We would have cut it, right. It would be yeah. not funny. Yeah. It would be not funny. No. And he eventually, he backs off of it as he goes, not because he realizes that it's offensive, but it's because he's really bad at accents and just gives up at a certain point. Yeah. I feel like his voice starts to hurt. It's like me doing Crunch Biggins, right? Like if okay. the first line, he's like <laughs> really into it. And then by the end, he's like, yeah, you know, so, yeah, jazz and stuff. <laughs> You know what I didn't like is this guy. It's a white guy. It's a white 
mm-hmm. trumpet player mm-hmm. and he's doing a black sun. Be weird if we were making fun of a black yeah, guy for right, talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black that would be weird. No, it's this that's he's, and he's got he's you. got the goatee <laughs> and he's got the like old like the cab driver hat and he's wearing this weird big oversized shirt thing. He looks like me in college and I was really unhappy oh, about wow. it. Oh wow. Almost it was like Uh-oh. really really accurate. Me dropping the picture of Heath into our notes right now <laughs> so, for comparison. And we, of course, we have a blink and you'll miss it attempt at comedy, right? I think the only time they ever even feign comedy in this entire sketch is where the guy says, yeah, we got our new album. And the interviewer says, oh, that's coming out on compact tablets soon, right? Get it? Like disc, but but old time. Like a bit of, Eli, uh, but tablet, a tablet, though. But it's, it would be... <laughs> Disorderly. It, there was a moment where I had to like, I had to sit there and recognize the fact that CDs and stone tablets are equally archaic at this point, right? Like, if you gave me a stone tablet, at least I could read the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a whole episode without telling Eli where me and Noah just do nothing but bad puns for like an hour and a half. <laughs> Never acknowledge it. Yeah, but they finally get around to, um, you know, the other army all killed each other and we go back to Ned Koppelstein. Yep. Uh, he's given up on the accent now. <laughs> he's completely a bit. He, he might as well be like, all right, well, I have to go out of it. No, we used that in the last one. Can I die? No, he likes using that for citation. Needed. <laughs> Damn it. Well, and then and, and he says, well, hey, band, way to knock him dead. And I'm like, oh, is that a joke? Two, because if so, then that's two. You guys have two in that sketch. <laughs> Rule of twos. But enough humor for the moment, damn it. Right? We're not just here to laugh and make fucking jokes. Blake wants to get real for a minute, youth pastor style. He tries to sit backwards in a bar stool. Doesn't work very well for him. He does. He does the thing. I don't know if you've ever seen this where a guy, a young guy is like, I'm going to put one foot up on this bar stool. Pretty cool. You know, it would be even cooler. Two feet. No, tipping, <laughs> tipping. <laughs> Back down. Yes. Back down. Nobody saw. It's cool. Did I scream tip? I screamed tipping. Oh, okay. We're still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> You're keeping all of this because the guy who was running the camera turned on the camera, told me to fuck myself and left. Okay. <laughs> I have to, well, actually, I turned it on and then I walked around here and then I'm going to turn around. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and he got, he's, he's going to do his little monologue about rock and roll. He goes, there was a guy who said, and I'm like, wait to cite your sources, bro. There was a guy who said that music can be more powerful than bombs. It's so rough. He starts his stupid monologue with like, the topic of my paper is rock and roll music is bad. <laughs> I started to write Webster's Dictionary defines music and then I saw <laughs> he does that he had already written that in his notes. I was like, damn it, Heath. Yeah, I wrote that as a joke and then he's like, <laughs> literally right after I typed that, he's like, I looked up the word song in the Bible and I was like, yep. oh my God, how are you doing that? <laughs> right. Blaine Bartle's behind me. He got it wrong because the Bible is not a thing you can look up words in, right? You're thinking of the dictionary or possibly an index, but yeah. But he says in the Bible, you know, they talk a lot about songs, but they never say like that certain types of music are bad. It's all about like, do you love God while you sing them? Right. Yeah. And specifically, he mentions that they don't do like the the Bible doesn't talk about volume or right, like or the beat. beats. <laughs> so mm-hmm. His point is like, well, the Bible never mentioned fucking time signatures so we don't use beats in our Christian music necessarily. <laughs> yeah. We do it. Beatless, you don't know. <laughs> and what's amazing about this monologue is that it's someone try right because the point of this monologue is, hey, let's open our hearts to Christian rock. It's a way to meet. It's a way to brainwash kids, right? That's the point. Mm-hmm. Except there's no logical way to hate rock and roll music. So he's like, I know you're upset about the time signature. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then he lands on like the message is God only cares about the effort, the faithful effort yes. of the music. Yes. And that's so perfect because Christian music is the effort grade of the art form of music. <laughs> sure, sure <laughs> is. It, the participation trophy of the arts, if ever there yeah. was one. Yeah, I love to. He's got to like he's got to come up with an example of music that is universally beloved by all of his audience. And he comes up with Jimmy Swagger. He says there was a time when even Jimmy Swaggart's music wasn't accepted in the church. But then he gives us he says, you know, there's more you can do with music than just sing it. There are three ways to use it for Christianity. 
One is to edify and encourage ourselves. And I'm like, well, you can just do that with with regular words, though. You don't need music for, for that. But uh, can I say, I don't think we write enough songs to encourage ourselves. You know, we've been known to use music on our programs. I think we should have some more, uh, you know, <laughs> boosting ourselves up music. We can do and it. And I get on that. Yeah. And then you, you can use music to exhort other people. Sure. That's two. And three is that you could use music to glorify God, which I feel like is a restatement of two. Yeah. Right. Or what are you what are you exhorting other people with with Christian music? Grocery lists and, um, <laughs> you know, tr truism. Number four is Al Jolson. Sorry, I forgot. one. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ron Lucy cuts in to tell us what's hot in case you needed a guy in a bright red pullover with a floppy mullet to tell you the style of the <laughs> moment. <laughs> and he opens with, ever wonder what happened to the sweet nope. comfort? Oh, man. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to stop you after you ever wonder. No. He sounds like a creepy guy on a store porch in a Stephen King short story, right? Did you ever wonder what happened to the members of the sweet comfort band? Well, nope, let me tell I'm you. ignoring you. I'm, I'm burying my toddler <laughs> in the pet cemetery. No. <laughs> Like Jerry Seinfeld as a stranger at a gas station as you're walking out. Mm -hmm. You ever noticed? Nope. No, man. So, Whatever you're about to do. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Also, I love that one of his top tens is like, Rick Kua does Christian music now. Um, I bet his regular band would love him back, but... uh, They actually do that. They're like, so Rick Kua has left... So who? Yeah, right. But Rick Kua has left secular music, and he's doing really good in Christian music, and his band wants him to come back, but he said no. <laughs> he, he told said him no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in my room. He didn't even answer their calls. <laughs> My guitar's up here. Yeah. So I was like, she, she was lucky to be dating me. Yeah. And is he the guy who's in now the Christian group called the Allies that they show us a picture of? I think so. Yeah. The, that the band weird... that looks like an evil gymnastics team for some reason, like on yeah. a propaganda Yeah. Poster. No, they're, they're definitely like the Jim Cotta Dark yes, Side reboot. Thank you. Yeah. They're the bad guys in Jim Cotta. 100%. Yeah, exactly. And then, okay, and then this bleeds into even more interview with Mylon Lefevre. And he says, so, you know, <laughs> Blaine asks him, he's like, what are some of the dangers of listening to rock music? And I'm like, I also am curious about that. <laughs> hey, Mylon Lefevre, as you sit there settling into the couch like a dead body, can you talk about your life's work and why you're ashamed of it and how it's bad? Can you do yes. that now <laughs> yeah. on the only TV you'll ever appear on? And he's like, yup, yup, sure can. Okay. And then, at this moment, they're playing that moral of the story music from a sitcom. Yes. But like way too fucking loud. And they keep going over the entire interview. It's so aggressive with the synth being like, blah, 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 blah. yeah, just uh -huh. so much. It's the best. everything about his story is sad. <laughs> I forget where I wrote it in my notes, but I wrote, I think they're trying to play him off, but they don't realize it's an interview, not a speech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Mylan explains to us that it's not that rock music is, is evil or satanic. God created it because God creates everything. And then Satan stole it from God. It was his idea first. Yeah. Yes, his exact words are, it could be used bad, wrongly. And I wrote in my notes, no second takes, my own, no second takes. Nope, nope. Mal, don't, no, no, wrong. Yeah, yep. right. So yeah, so then he gives us a list of uh, things to look out for so we can tell if the music that we're listening to is, is Christian or if it's evil and satanic. He's like, well, you know, listen to the lyrics. Does it tell you to, you know, to love yourself and that you can be anything you want to be? Because that's Satan right there. Yeah, the exact phraseology he uses is the spirit of the Antichrist. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very weird. It's a very weird. It, it turns into like a failed Jeff Foxworthy might be a redneck bit. Right. Right. And it's Martin Moyes like, if it tells you to talk back to your parents, spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah, yes. If you're walking down the street and you see a wall and it's only got one sign on it, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's very <laughs> weird. He goes, he goes, hey, yeah, you know, you don't have to listen to the records backwards. And I'm like, you know, you know, your audience, Mylon. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. But then and he, he reminds us, he's like, you don't have to listen to the records backwards. You just have to be as wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove. Which is a phrase we hear a lot. And I, I always think, well, you guys got that uh, that first half mastered. 
<laughs> this is also where he says, and I, cause he's talking about, you know, you just got to turn your life over to Jesus and Jesus is great and the Satan is bad. And he says, and I quote, there's no gray area. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why does that accidentally sum it up, man? He sure does. Yeah, and then he does this like weird name dropping montage. He's like, yeah, man, you know, the Beatles played on my records and I was in the same parking lot as Jimmy Dean from Jimmy Dean's Sausages. And I, I got arrested <laughs> like, on the front hood of a cop car. so many names, I hope I don't drop any of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. There must be a better way. I played with Billy Joel. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I was furious at that point because apparently he did for maybe one concert play with Billy Joel and I was so fucking mad. Don't bring yeah. Billy into this. Mm -hmm. How dare right? you? Yeah. <laughs> Only the good die young. Only the good die young made a bunch of money because the St. Louis Archdiocese was like, yeah, we're banning that song. <laughs> and he made a fortune selling it. Fuck yeah, man. Indeed. Yeah, but then he explains just like he, he knows all these people. He Elvis recorded one of his songs and he did heroin with Mick Jagger. And he's like, so I can tell you, you know, there are some people in rock and roll that were into satanic things. And I'm like, I'm like talking back to your parents or. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <I don't> <laughs> Satanic or spirit of the Antichrist? You know what I'm saying, Mylon? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, but the key is, it's not about how you wear your hair or what clothes you wear. It, the key is to be exactly my religion and literally nothing else matters in terms of my, you know, ethical assessment of you as a human being. <laughs> yes. And then the music that has been drowning him out swells and we realize that he was playing himself off mid-interview. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, and again, we pump fake a song, right? He starts to sing. Okay. In fairness, if Blaine Bartell was interviewing me and I had a synth, I'd be playing it super loud the yeah, whole that's time. True. No, you're it. right. You're right. That's fair. But yeah, so they pump fake another song at us. I just, I want to point out the lyrics. He says, like, I'll praise you, you know, obviously God, till the mountains reach the sky. And I'm like, they... They touch. They do. They already did they do. that. What are you <laughs> talking about, man? Come on, man. Elvis played one of your songs. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't the actual music, right? We cut back to the interview again. And he goes, Blaine Bartels says, like, hey, you know, I noticed that your lyrics often really have nothing at all to do with Jesus. And, and you're, it's like you don't want people to know that it's a stupid Jesus song. So how's that working out for you? And then Bailon gets way too honest. Yeah, he's like, no, no, let me explain. Uh, the songs that aren't about Jesus are a trap. They're a trap. <laughs> yes. I'm going to use the word trap. I'm going to use the English word trap. Uh, yeah, they're literally. So the idea is to get the kids to come to the concert only knowing these, you know, the, the surface lyrics and everything. And that's when you hit him with the real Jesus shit. He actually says, like, you know, maybe we can, you know, reach out to kids that come to the concert whose parents aren't Christian. <laughs> You know, lure in the feral kids. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> yes. Plus, plus, plus non-Christian kids. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean that metaphorically. I mean, lure in the feral kids. <laughs> yes. With our trap. Yeah. We are trying to trick non-Christian children into our religion with peer pressure. That's what he actually just. You know, like with a squirrel, like. <laughs> yeah. In a van. And keep in mind that like he probably means like hypothetical atheists, but that also includes. Jews, right? right? Just like yes. trying to trick a Jew. We've also got a, a lox and bagel set up that right in the middle of the concert hall. <laughs> <laughs> that, that gets a few of them. There's also this great moment where he's like, you know, do you think you your kids are going to get Christian values from Madonna or Prince who claims to be Christian? And I'm like, well, he, he's j Dob. I mean, that's Job not... Come on, there. I don't know Different if that's... Offshoot. Yeah. We all agree that's a cult. We all... Come on. Yeah. Like, come on, Mylon. No, meet us where we can, Mylon. Meet us yeah, where right, we can. Right. anywhere, we're all going to be fine with the same slur words. Right now, let's right. all just shoot them out, right? Yeah. And this is when he explains that it's okay, it, that it, if he was invited on the David Letterman show, he would totally go because yes. he would yeah. really be able to <laughs> preach Jesus if he was invited on the David Letterman show. I dare you, David Letterman. For, I dare you to have me on your show. I bet you're too scared. I was scared at this moment. I was like, God damn, I bet he got on Letterman. I looked it up. I looked up Mylon Lefebvre Letterman. Oh, no. I got okay. Mylon oh, Lefebvre on Heart to Heart with Sheila Walsh, presented by the 700 Club. First <laughs> well, that's all. That's just as good. Yeah. Yes. That's just. <laughs> and then I started watching that. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am yeah, I watching <laughs> this thing by the 700 Club? 
I'm going to go back to my love <laughs> And then he wraps it up by comparing his music to sending missionaries to Africa. And look, I mean, Mylan, we're in your camp when that we think your music and sending missionaries to Africa are very <laughs> are expensive, terrible ideas. things. Yeah. <laughs> but keep in mind that Christians think that sending missionaries to Africa is bringing them food and water and helping them and all that shit. So this guy is comparing himself to helping starving children by playing mediocre rock and roll with secret anti-Jewishness lyrics. Right. Well, yeah, and that's exactly it, right? Because the entire interview, the framing of the entire interview is, why should we like you and forgive you for the rock music, right? That's that's what Blaine Bartell is asking in so many words. And he's like, no, I'm a missionary to rock and roll. Think of rock and roll is a place that I go to to preach the word of, of Jesus. It would be like going to India, but with less cholera. And, and, and then we're like, oh, so you're the good guy in your story. <laughs> huh? We could switch out the locks and bagels for like something African or Indian, right? <laughs> I feel like... I want to say sand. He's... <laughs> So yeah, so 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 they pump fake another song at us, but then it's time for everybody's favorite mid-show sitcom, Family First. <laughs> now this happens in every single episode of Fire by Night. About halfway through, they just switch to this shit sitcom called Family First and do an episode of that as well. Yes, but the thing that I always forget that always makes me super happy is that Blaine Bartell plays the older son of of this couple that he's like a solid five and a half years older than. Yep. So the opening credits are always just like fucking grandpa in a cutoff t-shirt being like, yep, here's me at the high school prom. Yummers. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, the, the chick played his sister. I don't know if that's his real life sister or his wife or what, but her, her name's Kathy Bartell. So, you know, yep. It's one or the other, but yeah. So, but we get him and we get, the, I love their credits too, because they're like, clearly like, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll do some like bucolic, like suburban uh, shots like uh, this house. And um, I don't know, this house, but from slightly closer with the sprinklers on. <laughs> hey, um, guys, how many sets should we buy for our family first sitcom? Two. Oh, yep. <laughs> do you think we'll ever need more than two sets for our entire sitcom? Nope. Should we name it something other than like an SPLC listed hate group as the title? <laughs> family <laughs> first. Pretty close to several. All right, I want to I want to point out Eli's exaggerating. There are three sets. There's also wow. the garage. Yeah, they had the garage. You forgot that one. Yeah, called out on air. Called out on air. So, all right. So and then we we open up on the uh, the little brother playing a game of truck versus frisbee. It's not as fun as I just made it sound. <laughs> And Blaine is watching just in rapt silence. He's like, and Blaine's like, and then what happened? And yeah, it's, oh, no, I get it. The frisbee's like, a, yeah. And then Blaine literally puts his hot hat on backwards because he's he's being young now. I am a youth. Notice my hair. <laughs> he tries to spin the couch around. All right, everybody get up. <laughs> my, my receding hairline is covered by this backwards baseball cap. Yeah, You'll right notice. now I'm young. Yeah, but him and his his silly nerd friend Clarence are going to go play frisbee football now. And can I say they have gotten more and more desperate with each episode, right? Because at first Clarence was like the goofy friend, but now Clarence just walks into the room and he's like, "Is this a taser? My butthole!" Like he, they've, <laughs> they've stopped even remotely trying yeah. to have yes. Clarence relate. No, no, it's just about beating his ass up now. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's a fucking birthday clown. Spoilers for Fire by Night episode nine. The entire episode is just them kicking an unconscious Clarence <laughs> while blood <laughs> leaks out from his corpse for eight, 28 solid minutes. It's um, his whole life is the opening to Citation Needed. That's all. He yeah, right, exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're about to leave to go play uh, Frisbee football. And mom stops him and he's like, hey, don't forget Blaine Bartell's character. Your cousin Brian is coming for a few days. That's going to be the plot of the episode. And we get the impression that Blaine is not a big fan of his cousin Brian. Right. So he leaves. The little brother says, Mom, I've never met cousin Brian. What's he like? And mom's like, well, he's nice, but but he does have his problems. Yeah, I wrote my notes. That's nothing, Mom. That's yep. nothing. You said Everyone, nothing just that's now. That's what problems are. Yeah. 
So, okay, so then we get mom showing Brian to his room. Now, apparently, they couldn't get the star power of Kathy Bartell for every month's episode. I mean, come on, Mm-mm. give me a break. So she's not in this one. So they quickly, like, write her out. She's like, well, she's on a ski trip with her friends, so you can stay in her room. And he's like, oh, that way we didn't have to build another set. And they're like, yep, damn straight. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> also, the intro to this scene, definitely a porn. Yes. Right? She's like, so, Brian, you'll be staying here. Would you like a... Welcome shoulder massage, perhaps? Yeah. She like scoots up onto the dresser and crosses her legs and leans in. And she's like, so are you uh, you still into Jesus the way you were back in when you were a kid? Huh? You remember? <laughs> remember when you were a little boy and we tricked you into making a lifelong commitment to our religion? How's that? Is that worked out really well for you? Huh? How do you feel about She literally asks, how do you feel about that now? And he's like, yeah. You know, I think we're all sort of dealing with generational trauma in our I'm own like way. Spending time <laughs> with the Lord. <laughs> he also asks her, can I play my guitar here? And I wrote my notes. No, she's allergic, Brian. What the fuck do you mean? Can I play well, my guitar? I, I wrote in my notes, imagine if she says no. But ultimately, this episode is about them saying no. Yep, yeah, it, it really His whole is. thing, he's just supposed to be like evil here. So he's like, can I play my guitar right here? Squirt Satan. I just yes, uh, yes. finished up beating the Soches with a pony boy and fucking soda pop. <laughs> I'm a greaser, evil Satan guitar. <laughs> Stay gold. Yeah, but she's like, are you still Christian? He's like, not really. And then she gets the fuck out. She doesn't want anything to do with this room anymore. So then we cut into the garage. It's the following morning. Robert is still procrastinating his garage cleaning chores that we learned about in the previous scene. Mm-hmm. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't want to clean the garage. And this is where Brian wanders in with sunglasses on in the in the garage. And he slept in because he's a bad boy. Yeah, right. He's so satanic. He slept till 10 a.m. And the writing is so bad that after he's like, oh, good morning. Good morning. They determine that these characters have never met and don't know each other, which means that they were both totally fine with this stranger walking into their house. And they were like, yeah, Hello, stranger who is in a house I'm staying in. <laughs> so- <laughs> In Robert's case, it's his fucking house. And right, a rock and roller yeah. walks into the garage no and he's just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Kidnapping was easier in the 80s is what I'm oh, saying. Yeah, Kidnapping yeah, no, was much, a lot easier. Much. And he says to Robert, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you know, I have to have to do my chores, but I hate doing chores. And Brian's like, nobody likes chores. Chores suck. I say that because I'm not filled with the love of Christ like your older brother, Blaine Bartell, <laughs> who loves to do chores. Jesus. How about we do some evil rock and roll and other risk behavior right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's amazing because he opens with who are you into and Robert's not supposed to know what that means. So he's like, I inhabit no bodies except my own. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. But he's like, no, man, what bands are you into? Do you like heavy metal bands like, you know, Bon Jovi? <laughs> He lists like 11 different bands and they're all different genres. He's like Bon Jovi, The Beatles, ACDC, an old woman playing an organ in an abandoned baseball stadium, (laughs) the sound of a child crying, 13 years worth of captured audio of the White House. You know, like (laughs) rock and roll. And the kid's like, no, I don't listen to that kind of music that kind of music and and <laughs> Brian goes like oh what do you listen to Barry Manilow and then he starts singing Barry Manilow songs at him as a gotcha you're the one who probably knows the lyrics he sings like an entire verse of Copacabana yeah. to mock this kid for knowing Copacabana I bet you know these lyrics it's a delightful song. Fuck you. Yeah. And then he tells him that he owns 600 albums and yes. I, I thought for a second I know I was supposed to be making fun of the movie, but I had this moment where I was like, oh, right. We should probably explain to the younger members of our podcast audience (laughs) that one used to pay for individual music collections instead of paying $24 for all the music that has ever been or ever will be. Yeah. I also, I love that Robert goes like, you know, my parents don't like, you know, taught me not to listen to music that isn't Christian. And this is after the Barry Manilow rip. And I'm just like, what so so Barry Manilow is too hardcore for you is what you're saying which you're literally <laughs> saying right now yeah but yeah but Brian tries to evangelize in his words kicking rock and roll to Robert he he thinks Robert has some rock and roll in him he just needs somebody to help you know draw it out 
Yeah, I wrote in my notes, he's going to give Robert cool lessons. I'm rooting for a house fire that kills them both. Yeah. All right. Well, while we can cling to the hope that Robert will turn to the much less molesty world of rock and roll before it's too late, we'll take our final break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will anything happen? Should I stay or should I go? Do you really want to hurt me? Find out the answers <laughs> to these questions and more when we return for the mawkish conclusion of... Fire by Night, Episode 7. I want to be sedated. (laughs) Hello, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick, representative of the evil cabal of vegans. Vegans have invaded every aspect of your life. Your sneakers, your restaurants, and now we're in your Hello Fresh. But, but, but Eli, with HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. W- what's vegan about that? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Noah. This summer, HelloFresh is here to take the work out of eating well. Reach your goals with delicious, calorie-smart, and protein-smart lunches and dinner options. Plus, new vegan recipe you bastards <laughs> oh but it's not just meals heath hello fresh has new snacks meals and more to add on to your weekly order like their fun s'mores bundle for the kids and some of those options are vegan you will not get away with this <laughs> but i will ethelton because hello fresh is more convenient than grocery shopping but it's also less expensive than takeout. Money-saving malfeasance. It's worse than you think, Heath. HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and the easy-to-unpack delicious recipes means that the evil cabal of vegans can be in more kitchens than ever. So if you're ready to become a cog in the big V machine, go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use the code Awful16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping? Indeed. The evil cabal of vegans, because it all starts with a meatless Monday. And that's why sharing is so important. Why, thanks, Dad. Did somebody say important? (laughs) <laughs> Clarence, how's it going, young man? Oh, man, not so good. Not so good. I just learned you can fall up the stairs. Oh, <laughs> oh Clarence. Oh, Clarence. Anyway, little Timmy. Whoa! The thing I, oh. <laughs> ah, shit. Speared my balls with a fire poker. Oh, Clarence, you're so silly. Please call the hospital. It's right through. As I was saying, the thing about sharing mm. is that it's an amazing way very seriously injured. to show our friends that we care in the light of the Lord. The light of the Lord? Yes, the light of the Lord. Jesus called on us to love our brother and to hold him as we would hold our own. Just so much blood. So when we share, we do the Lord's Look. work as well as a kindness. Wow, thanks, Dad. Isn't that great, Clarence? Uh, Cl- Clarence? Oh, 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 he's in shock. Oh, Clarence. I'll call 911. Yeah, no, you should do that. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action still mid, mid-show mid sitcom. <laughs> so fucking do with, with With Blaine Bartell's character getting home from running errands for his mom because he's a good kid so he doesn't talk mm-hmm. back to his parents he respects his mother and father as it commanded by the book Exodus yeah and he's going to call Cheryl and ask her out so he does some comedic bits about asking a girl out just want to throw out there that voice cracking isn't a joke um, some people actually find voice cracking extra <laughs> so <laughs> sure I don't know why that would be comedy Here's the fucked up thing, right? Because he does the whole bit where he's like, mm, oh, sorry. Sure. he's practicing beforehand. Cheryl, would you like to go out with me? Hello, Cheryl. Would you like to go? And then he calls. He's like, hello, Cheryl. Can you? And he and he and he and his voice cracks. And he actually nails it. He absolutely nails it. But because he is physically incapable of successful comedy, he keeps going. He tries again and he doesn't nail it. And then he tries again <laughs> and he doesn't. And of course, he rule of sixes it again. Yep. Just in case it was in danger of being funny. 
Yeah, he's like, wait, what's that? How about Friday? Uh, you're making curtains. You're hanging curtains. You're returning the curtains. That Bed Bath & Beyond shut down already, but you heard the other one has a sale. <laughs> Your cousin can't you drive you that? It just goes on and on and on with this one-line joke. Well, and, and that's just the thing, Eli. You can't help but improve the joke as you do it, right? Because he says, did, like, yeah. what are you doing tonight? She's like, I'm making curtains. He's like, what are you doing tomorrow night? Oh, you're hanging curtains. What are you doing the next night? And then you're expecting it to be curtain-related. Right? Oh, you're closing the curtain. Something, whatever. But he's like, nope. Taking out the storm windows, huh? And you're like, where oh, are uh, you making it? You're making a spreadsheet. What? Uh, how are you going <laughs> to set up the uh, the rows and the columns on that? Really? Okay, perpendicular to each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to leave the first and the rows empty. Mm -hmm. Spacing. Do you color them? I, I color them. No. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So yeah, so but she hangs up on him. She doesn't want to go out with him. But just then, Robert and Brian walk in. So he pretends that she said yes because this isn't an episode about the dangers of lying. So he that's okay now. Right, exactly. And he said he turns to to Brian, who he apparently hasn't seen in in ten years. His cousin. And he's like, "How you doing, man?" And Brian, because he's a rock and roller, sings "Good Times, Bad Times" by Led Zeppelin at him. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this, but rock and roll people literally cannot talk about anything but music. They're no, a you're, that's true. robot that's true. that literally only knows how to speak in musical lyrics. And if there was anything topical to 1987 heavy metal, it was Good Times, Bad Times by fucking Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I, this is such a minor point, but I just I absolutely love the extent to which they're not even trying to hide Blaine's love, Mike. Nope. Right. It's just there. It's just they're like. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> so. I'm pretty sure they tried to put it up under his shirt and he was like, gay, no. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you going to chop wood about this later, Blaine? Yeah, yeah I'm going to chop wood about this later. <laughs> so, so yeah, so Blaine invites Brian and Robert for some Frisbee football, but Brian's too cool for that because he's a rock and roller. You know, he's like, no, I was going to show Robert some sick shreds on my axe. He goes, oh, <laughs> there's a chopping wood joke here somewhere, I'm sure, but I'm Blaine Martell, so I don't know yeah. <laughs> where it is. And as they leave, he's like, well, you know, we've got a week. We'll have plenty of time. And I'm like, oh, my God, this fucking show already forgot that it said he's only there for three days. That's awesome. There's an amount of time that you are here for. Don't worry. We won't even bother to end the episode. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. <laughs> So, okay. So we cut upstairs to Brian shredding. And at first I assumed that they were just going to get a double to do the guitar playing, but apparently they don't care if it's good or not. So they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. This is, this is the intro to Inner Sandman. Are you doing so. <laughs> the, the pipe music from Mario? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they suggested in this episode that several rockers literally worship Satan. Mm -hmm. And the most mm -hmm. insulting thing they say is at the end of that guitar thing, he goes, that was Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> yes. Absolutely <laughs> like, not. No, the fuck no. it wasn't, man. <laughs> I mean, as he was dying, he actually says that was a riff invented by Mr. Eddie Van Halen. And that's the this invent. That's not how invent works. That's no, not how not anything how riff works. works. Yeah, right, right. And then Robert bless his little heart was the music steps. He goes, Hey man, doesn't your dad get mad at you for looking like that? <laughs> Good for you, Robert. Okay. Good for you. When I say it, they give me a podcast. When you say it, you're a hero. <laughs> yeah. Right. So no, but now we should point out that like they didn't, they didn't like go all out on this guy, right? He's got a, a clip on earring and a Metallica shirt. That's the only thing they've done to rock and roll this guy. He doesn't have long hair. He doesn't have ripped jeans, anything like that, right? It's a sweet ass earring, though. That's the Rocky Five earring, like the really oh, long yeah. hanging yeah, with yeah, the yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's definitely, it's so the good. most rock and roll of earrings. That glorious month and a half where men were wearing hoops. <laughs> yeah, so, no, they weren't. Yeah, but he's like, no, man, I can dress however I want because my dad doesn't love me or the Lord Jesus Christ and therefore is an absentee. <laughs> yep. I'm a latchkey atheist with angst. <laughs> Evil atheist, God's dead. You can tell by the guitar. <laughs> yeah, and then Robert's like, well, I don't know. If I acted like you, my mom would kill me. And he's like, yeah, no, my mom left me. And I wrote in my notes, I feel like maybe mom leaving her child was worse than the child's. 
music taste. Yeah, Do you, you think would that think TV show? Maybe. Yeah. Is that what you also think? Because I feel like you don't think that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, but Robert just like he just talks on and on about how much it must suck to be Brian right in front of Brian. And then Brian's like, man, I think we need to make you into a rock and roller, too. And he's like, that would be the correct act three twist from a sitcom perspective. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, OK, so we cut downstairs. Blaine and his buddy are getting home from Frisbee football. And Clarence, who's a nerd, you can tell because he's wearing glasses. He dropped the Frisbee and got a black eye, you know? Yeah, this is me and anyone I've ever been put on the same board game team with. Just, I'm sorry that I didn't do the very basic things <laughs> you were assigned to do. I know. <laughs> oh, the effort and humor. He's like, no, I'll come back and we'll practice because practice makes, um, I don't remember. And you're like, yeah, right. This is a joke. If he doesn't remember what practice makes. It's like humor. Yep. <laughs> 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 That's the tagline of this movie. James Spader just announcing, just announcing from the back of the theater, that was a joke. <laughs> Move on. It's like a simile. <laughs> so, and then once Clarence leaves, this is when Blaine hears the rock and roll coming from upstairs. And again, this 31-year-old guy who's trying to play 17-year-old kid goes, what's all that racket up there? <laughs> Relax, Blaine. <laughs> and then dad, who's supposed to be older than Blaine Bartell, who's like 12, 13 years younger than Blaine Bar Bartell, he gets mad too because he's reading his Bible. He's trying to study his Bible. Yeah. Uh -huh. He looks insane also. Can we talk about yep. him for a second? The fucking sure. Hobbit Coke dealer dad here that makes no <laughs> sense. He looks like that weird guy they also invited to go fishing with you, right? Like everybody told you all your friends that you know are going to be there. And then there's this guy, too. And he's like right, he's way like, too into it. You don't remember my wife's brother? He was, um, Craig, where, where, where were you? I was, in, <laughs> I was in Vietnam. I was married to someone I met online, but she turned out to be a poodle. Yeah, so... <laughs> You and him are sharing a bed. Okay. Um, we're all going to quickly make eye contact with each other and confirm this is all happening. Yeah. We're letting this happen. Eli's doing a big smile at Heath over his shoulder. Big <laughs> smile. <laughs> so, I just want to point out that dad flies into a absolutely psychotic rage in this scene and will spend the rest of the sitcom screaming at everybody and he's supposed to be the good guy. About the evils of rock music, yeah. He says, if the rapture happened, we wouldn't be able to hear the trumpet. And I'm like, oh my God, this is bad. So, yeah, so, but, but he's got, and, and Robert has been sucked into the rock and roll, right? You, you can tell because he's been shirking his chores. <gasps> oh. Also, can we, it's amazing to me. We've talked this much about physical appearances and mom's mullet hasn't come up yet. No, mom's got a glorious mullet. Sorry. No, I couldn't hear you over the sound of her 80s haircut existing. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That they, that, it wasn't that there weren't mass shootings in the 80s. It's just that no one noticed because they were bouncing off all the mullets. Yeah, it, it just, must have been. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. So, yeah, she, she, she's they, there's a hole in the ozone later that just followed that lady around. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, but got her name on it, like the Vietnam Memorial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so but dad is railing against the evils of rock music. And, and he says of Brian, he's like, you know, he's in and out of juvenile court. He's terribly unhappy. And I'm like, do you think it's because of the rock and roll music? Is the that music the, is the problem there yeah. that you're making? Good times, bad times. He's had a share, you know. <laughs> is that he says, he's searching for his own identity. And I wrote in my notes, I bet me yelling at him will help. <laughs> yeah, right. About how he chose the wrong one. So then, okay, so dad's going to go up and talk to him. We cut to Robert and Brian rocking out upstairs when dad comes in to old at them, right? 
And he's so, he's so psychotically angry. It's impossible for me to believe that they thought this was the good guy. He runs into the room. He's like, Robert, you go to your room for fucking wearing things. I was fucking screaming. Okay, well, I'm not get the fuck out of here. I'm the good guy. You got an earring in like some damn sissy boy. And sh- he's got like uh, some, some silver glitter in his hair. He's like, wash that goop out of your hair. You're going to turn gay. You know, so cousin Brian brought like silver hair dye glitter in his like weekend bag, extra earrings. Yeah, yes. Apparently in his, it's in his go bag. Okay. Hell yeah. A small leather jacket for a little buddy, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> what did your cousins bring when they came to visit you? He right. I didn't have cousins. <laughs> so yeah, so so they they kick the kid out, and he's like, "I'm gonna yell at you about rock music now." And he's like, "That's fucking weird." And he goes, "You visit my house, and you try to turn it into a rock arena." And he's like, "He asked permission, right?" He asked. Yeah, he la- liter- We literally saw the scene where he asked if he could play his guitar here. Yeah. You could also say we changed our mind, you fucking asshole. And he's like, you know what? I'm out of here. And dad's like, I'll be damned if this is the only parental yelly monologue I'm going to do in this episode. Sit back down. Yeah, he's like, don't leave. Stay and change who you are fundamentally <laughs> yes, as a person. Exactly. <laughs> I will lure you into a trap with a lox bagel. No, you're not. Okay. Oh, fuck. Shit, what, shit. what do you Wrong eat? The, yeah. We love you. That's why I'm up here to say that we hate everything about you yes. and the things you've chosen. Yes. Yeah. We love you. And you. I know you don't want to hear this, but Jesus Christ still loves you. He yells at this man with an accusatory finger. Yeah. What yeah, the- and he definitely implies that Jesus loves even you, right, not yes, just Jesus yes. loves you. Yeah, yeah. And then we get my best worst. Right, oh, Dad yeah, leaves too. the room, and again, Brian is being played by a twenty-nine-year-old guy or whatever. And they have apparently given this man the challenge. They said you have one point four seconds to do as many tantrum things as possible without breaking anything. <laughs> go, go. Don't think about it. Just go. Thirty dollars <laughs> per tantrum thing, and he's like, throw. Toss, stomp, jump, <laughs> <laughs> jumping jack, backflip. <laughs> but it doesn't work. It's the best. This no. has happened to me too as a kid. You're all angry and you're trying to get something impactful to happen, but you punch like your bed and you're like, I'm angry at this soft pillow. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angrier than the noise. There was no noise. <clears throat> I loved it so much. The whole episode is worth watching for just for that. And now we get Brian. He's packing up to go. He's muttering to himself about how Jesus Christ does not love him. And he's not loved him. And he does not accept it. And, and then we see him. And we didn't mention this earlier. He started stealing after mom left. He started stealing Connie's jewelry because he doesn't love Jesus. Yeah. So now he's going to steal a necklace from the girl's room that he's staying in. And Robert is going to see him doing it using the old open the door very obviously and stare right at you, but the plot demands you pretend not to see me trick, right? <laughs> Every door in all of sitcom universe is ajar. Yeah. It's all <laughs> right? yeah, slightly so ajar. Mm-hmm. And then, and so Brian, he's going out the window. He's 29. I feel like he could leave through the door, but no, he's going out the window and Robert's like, Brian, where are you going? And Brian shouts, shut up. You better not tell anybody I'm leaving out this window right now and running away, right? I feel like they can hear you, man. (laughs) It's like someone called closing time before this scene because they're just speeding through the beats of this moment. Just like, where are you going? I'm going. I'm going. Don't tell anyone. Okay, I'm going immediately to tell someone. Yeah, (laughs) right. Yeah, we cut downstairs. Dad's still furious about all the goop that was in Robert's hair. This is when he runs in and immediately narks on on Brian, right? So dad grabs Blaine Bartell. They're going to go get him. We cut outside. They have an exterior shot. Yeah, they had that kind of money. And as Brian's trying to sneak away, he runs right into Clarence and Clarence falls down on the ground. <laughs> he hurts Clarence and that literally no one in the show acknowledges it. Nope. Not a say. Clarence is like, oh, that really hurt. And they're like, Brian, we need to talk to you about your rock and roll, which means that if you were watching this in the live studio audience, I assume you just watched Clarence drag himself <laughs> off stage. <laughs> All right. Clarence was just like backing up with a cauldron of hot oil. And he was just like, yeah, right. Uh, 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 <laughs> God, Clarence. So, okay. 
So we cut inside where Daz chewing Brian out for all 14 feet of his attempted runaway, right? <laughs> and he's like, and you stole jewelry from Connie? And this is where Brian dares them to call the cops for stealing Connie's jewelry, right? Yeah. Holds the phone out. Go ahead. Call the cops. See if I care. I have angst. <laughs> he calls He calls Robert a squeal. Mm-hmm. A squeal. He says, Robert, you squeal. <laughs> yes. I just I just greatly enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the dad's like, we's like, well, you don't want you to go to jail. We want you to know Jesus. I'm like, choose jail, Brian. Choose. Go jail. to jail, Brian. But there's actually a lot of Jesus in jail. So like if you're if you're actually, yeah, right, right. Now now I think about it. Flip flopping between the two, you can have both. <laughs> <laughs> but Blaine steps up because he's the hero, because he's 45 and he runs the show and he's like, wait, wait, everybody, stop fighting. I want to show him a video, and I wrote in my notes, please be this episode of Fire by Night. Please do a space balls. Please do a space balls. <laughs> yes, he's got an educational video for just such an occasion. <laughs> so they go upstairs. Rob Blaine's like, I want the outro to myself, damn it. So they go upstairs. They're going back into Connie's room because they only had the one bedroom set. And he says, look, Brian, I know you're happy. I, I can tell from the rock and roll. And Brian's like, right. No, yeah, no, obvious. It's pretty obvious. I listen to rock and roll. Therefore, I'm not happy. He says, if you loved Jesus as much as you loved rock, you wouldn't have so many problems. So <laughs> either being Christian removes your problems or God punishes people for their music choices. Either way, not great. It's one of those two things. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. We get this so often. Brian says, well, you know, I just don't know how to be perfect like you guys. It's like, yeah, that's it. Christians were jealous of your perfection. Yes. That, no <laughs> Christian cinema can resist having an antagonist go, I'm not perfect like you. And then having the protagonist go, yes, I am perfect. Right. Yeah. He doesn't even go the only God's perfect route here. He goes, no, I know it's very difficult to be as perfect as me. You got to chop a lot of wood. <laughs> This is also when he says, Jesus isn't a square old fashioned guy. And I'm like, yes, he is. He's a 2000. He's a rabbi from Palestine 2000 years ago. He is definitely an old fashioned guy. Also, you just said square old guy in 1987. You fucking twerp. OK, <laughs> that's <it. laughs> so. Yeah, but he's like, he's like, you know, look, I don't want to sound like I'm preaching at you, but each of us has an emptiness that only Jesus can fill. I'm like, that's you trying not to sound like you're preaching, huh? Jesus, what does preaching sound like? <laughs> right? I was going to say. Holy shit. But he's like, but I have a video here that I think that, you know, might really speak to you. It's of Mylon Lefebvre and the broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, Do they always have to put his name in that font. Like, yes, they yeah, always have to put his name in that a, font. It's a, yeah. Um, they, they, people called him Frenchie for a while, and he's still a little <laughs> sensitive about that. So yeah, so and and the, so he puts on the the music video, and we're still getting like the you know the opening tones of a live show before any real music bursts out. That's all we've gotten, and Brian's already going like, "Whoa, these guys are Christian." <laughs> yeah, he says they sound kind of like Journey, like not not what the fuck really. <laughs> I don't I don't know who Mylon Lefevre's lawyers spoke to to be like, OK, so if there's another character in the show within the show that <laughs> says that Mylon sounds like Journey, will we get sued? And it was like, I think we're OK. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he, they're just like Journey, only not satanic and only not as satanic as Journey. As Journey. That hard, famous or heavy metal. metal. Heavy metal <laughs> song <laughs> called Don't Stop Believing that's anti-Christian. Yep. <laughs> they want you to keep believing. See, Christians don't know their allies. They don't know who's on their side. <laughs> so, They're pro-believing Christians. Yeah, duh. So, so, But we're going to watch the video along with Brian. This is one of the songs that we pump faked earlier, right? We watched them watch a video. In the movie? Yes. Oh, yeah. We watch Brian wrestle with profound lyrics like many more miles to go. Yeah. And just, just to be clear how meta we are right now, we're watching <laughs> people watch a movie inside a sitcom inside a TV show. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure the wool dasher mizzle is going to walk in the room and be like, oh, this is a little bit much. You're losing people, Blaine. 
an Ouroboros flies in. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> And we can't understand the, the music is mixed so poorly in this live video that we can't really hear Mylon singing over the keyboard, right? He's just being mm -hmm. drowned out the whole time. We do hear the lyric Christ has won and the crowd goes nuts for that That's one. The and he very clearly didn't expect it. he was like, Christ has won. And some fucking hoinka doink in the front row is like, fuck yeah, Jesus, kick his ass. And I was like, <laughs> not the reaction. <laughs> Planned for a concert. <laughs> and because Blaine can't shut the fuck up for an entire Mylon Lefebvre song, he cuts in during the bridge to tell Brian about the love of Christ a little more. <laughs> hey, just I'm the star of the sh tit show. <laughs> okay, you can go back to the Shut music. the fuck up. I'm listening to Mylon Lefebvre. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, but Brian is breaking down in tears over penetrating lyrics like he can take your sin and cast it to the wind. That's a rhyme, by the way. And, and then and then as I don't know, it's one of those songs that keeps being fake over. Right. Like over oh, and over. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, is that it? No, nope, that's just a, there's a whole nother refrain. Yeah, because he keeps being like and come back home where you okay. will. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> but Okay, now it's I'm gonna I'm gonna hit pause. I'm gonna hit pause. It's just me doing that one embarrassing clap at the Philharmonic. <laughs> God damn it, <laughs> motherfucker! Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck, ah, oh, fuck. It's trying to show that I knew when the bass solo was over. He was just pausing. <laughs> fuck. Oh shit! You know, and then it, like Brian wrestles with those way the weighty message of "Come on home," which is repeated about four hundred and eleven times at the end of this fucking song. That is, unless you're gay or trans, then you probably literally got kicked out. Oh, of your right, home. But you're, you're not know, allowed. Everyone to, else, yeah, yeah, you gotta go to somebody else. Continue to be home. Oh, so, and 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 rather than actually wrapping up that scene or the mini sitcom within the show at all. Blaine is just, we're going to cut from that video to Blaine back on his bar stool, giving us his closing thoughts. <laughs> so, so he was like, hey, Brian, I'm going to walk over to that stool right over there next to the random pallet that is off to the side. <laughs> I don't know why we have that right next to our house, but I'm going to do that and give a speech. You just yeah. sit tight. Hey, everybody. Uh, we shot the ending scene where Brian came to Jesus, but that was a lot about Brian and I started to chop wood, if you know what I'm saying. So... <laughs> I'm just going to talk. I'm going to talk for the rest of the episode. It's all me, 100%. Yep. Did you know 93% of pastors have no plan to combat the greatest enemy to the growth in their church? <laughs> he goes. Let's change that. That's from the Heath, website. I feel like you memorized a bunch of chopping wood. I'm, I'm looking at BlaineBartle.com. Yep, no, I, bet, I bet you've been looking at it pretty much the entire episode. He goes, he goes just like uh, uh, Mylon said. I'm like, okay, so you're not even pretending that he's famous convincingly at this point. Yeah. <laughs> He goes, at one point he goes, you know, there's probably a lot of children watching, uh, some adults even. And I'm like, I, I seriously, a lot. I doubt it. A I, lot isn't <laughs> really. Good. Come on, man. We're, we're watching this on YouTube and you didn't bother to have this taken down. So relax. <laughs> <laughs> and right. The synth guy got even louder with the moral of the story and music here. So like mm. Blaine is trying to like volume fight with the synth and I could not stop laughing. It was so fun. And we should also say that this is all delivered with sort of that feverish, you know, the band's playing me off, but I still have six people to thank kind of pacing too, right? He starts, yeah. he's, ta he's talking about how Jesus is way better than other religious leaders. Muhammad, psh, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. He's got nothing that, on Jesus. That <laughs> losing track and shitting on Muhammad for a solid eight seconds was my favorite part of him. Where he's just like, and yeah, I mean, a lot of people said they were God. Fuck. But those people are Brown, what am I doing? <laughs> Play louder, synth guy. Sorry, they're playing me off. I'd like to also not do the opposite of thank. I hate these other races, but really quick, uh, I don't like the Browns. I don't like yes. uh, Muslim is bad. Uh, Jewish, uh, atheist. Okay, Adrian, Sorry. Adrian Brody. <laughs> Also, I, I just I have to point this bit out, too, because he goes, you know, I know there's uh, I believe there's a young person out there who's been feeling the Lord's presence for the last you know few weeks. I'm like, oh, my God, dude, are you going to start sensing someone whose name starts with the J? Yes, what? I had the same thing. <laughs> He's cold channeling now. Yes. Jesus fucking Christ. He's like, God will, you know, like Mylon said, he'll remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. And I'm like, they touch. 
Those two things, I don't care east <laughs> of what, west of, they touch, they have to. They meet in the middle. Okay. You ever look at a map left and right? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, it, but he tells us the very specific magic words that we have to use if we want to join his Jesus club right now, which uh, we should. We should do that. Act now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. While supplies last. <laughs> He's like, I'd like to pray for you now. Lord, I pray that you be these people watching become Christian. And I'm like, well, it's weird now if we're praying together that <laughs> that would be the prayer. I'm, I'm supposed to. I pray that you become Christian, Dave Bartell. Yeah, right. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. You're over there chopping wood backstage. I'm over here at <laughs> six. Watching the only VHS my parents will let me watch. Yeah. The, who needs to pray for who, Dave Bartell? Yes. <laughs> and then we get more shitty music, right? Yeah. Do we get another Mylon song? The bassist wants everyone to know he's too good for the for this band, and he is. So that is correct. <laughs> they do special effects, just like a real music video, but they like paid for the free trial of it for a second because it instantly ends. It's worse than that, Eli. They just went through all the different built-in effects on that JVC camcorder. And then like they, they were like, oh, it's really only, there's only six. We've already used all of them, so no more. What if we ended it with a... No, okay. All, all right. right. I, I, see, uh, that. I thought that would be better. Star wipes? <laughs> and, then, and then, and I just have to talk about this. At the very end, fucking Blaine Bartell comes out again. He's like, last word. Last yes, word. right, right. I'm still talking. I get to talk one more time. Smile into the song. Now I get to talk some more. <laughs> Noah can't edit out my joke if I call back to it. I'm here again. <laughs> we're, g- we're going to Colorado next month. And you see him look out at the audience like, huh? That'll be fun. <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> so we're in Tulsa. So that's a step up. Definitely a better place. <laughs> Just even the worst of Colorado is better than the best of Oklahoma, right? All right. And that's it. They wrap up there. So I just I have to know, because obviously we've got more fire by night in us. What hard hitting subject would you guys like to see them tackle on the next episode? Ooh, uh deviled eggs versus <laughs> doubled <laughs> eggs. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Board games that aren't racist enough. Oh, interesting. All yeah. right. All right. <laughs> And well, that's going to do it for our review of Fire by Night Episode 7. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to return to starting positions for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, Keith, I'm off on vacation next week. Come here. Let me touch your faces. I'm going to miss you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Miss. You do. Stop. Miss. You miss. Do. That's enough. So I've left you with something good. Let me read you the official description from Amazon Prime. This is what you see when you try to watch this movie on Amazon Prime. Quote, When a family goes adventuring at a state park, the wife is kidnapped by a ruthless unknown man. John Henderson is forced to rely totally on God to find her. After receiving bad news from the detective, he must rely on the power of prayer to bring his wife home. Will his faith be enough to save her in time? This was our first film project. No script or budget with the windows might. Thank you. What? Holy shit. Oh, is this Badge Bible Bigfoot people? This is, that's right. That's right. Mm hmm. This, you'll be watching in Jesus' name. Yes. We're going back to our favorite no budget bigots from the Pacific Northwest, the Wright family. Fuck yeah. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 407 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing ADS Citation, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slapping of Dress on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audience audio engineer Morgan Kirk and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Evil Cousin Brian and the rest of the family are still just sitting there motionless in sitcom timeout universe. <laughs> <laughs> Blaine Bartell would go on to publish a book about his, quote, deadly descent into the secret sexual underworld of America. End quote. Did he die? I know somebody did. God, I hope so. Mylon Lefebvre realized his name was Mylon, not Myron, at the age of 68, saying, quote, 
Are you guys sure? That's not even a name. <laughs> That's two, by the way. Two. Eli, did you, did you find that you were a little bit, you know, bigoted towards medium height people when you said a joke last week? I thought you were. So. What happened? What? What happened? That didn't actually happen. I'm <laughs> just talking in the voice of some asshole on Facebook. Oh, okay. I got it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I thought, here's what I thought happened. I That's very funny, one, and it's not your fault I didn't get it. Two, I thought you were like, now that we were done, you were like, okay, you know what? I've been thinking about this for more than a week and I'm ready to take you down a bag. <laughs> Eli, you see I was this. like, oh, all right. Time for me to own, own and be responsible. All right. Interstitial one. I'm sorry. I can't get over that I spelled wrong. No, you actually say they're, it's they're both in the dictionary, I'm pretty sure. But <laughs> oh, okay. most people would definitely use a U, I'm pretty sure also. <laughs> Just the image of poor Heath on his end being like, oh, yep, now Cal I know what he was going Cal for. <laughs> I was like, maybe chalk? Oh, no, he's doing no, the, the no. weird alternate, I guess. some I've seen that once or twice. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.